All right, we're back at it again, episode 34, and today we're talking about the legendary Cheetah. Now, this is probably going to be a little bit of a quicker episode when it comes to the build. However, I have plenty of information to share with you. But before we actually get into the animal itself, let's discuss what we are doing with the exhibit. So, seems how the Cheetah is all about speed and running, I decided to make the exhibit elongated. This way it has a nice open area for it to take off and really make a scene out of itself uh, in contrast to some of the other ones that are just walking around enjoying their life. This one has something to prove and we're going to put a slight moat just around up front sort of so that you can get a nice look into the exhibit with uh, as little as possible getting in the way and still having a decent amount of protection from the animals since how this is absolutely a 100% land based kitty cat not a big fan of the water now let's discuss the animal in question shall we the cheetah the name we know it as actually comes from the Hindu word of cheetah which means the spotted one scientifically it is known as the asanonyx julatus which is Greek, the immobile claw, and then in Latin as crested, based on the crested nature of baby cheetahs. Baby cheetahs tend to have a nice, almost a full length mohawk, helping it blend in with the tall grasses. However, it is also hypothesized that it is made to appear somewhat like the infamous honey badger. Uh, in its younger years, it eventually does lose it as it grows up, gaining its very predominant spots, which also aid in its camouflage. Now, despite what many of you may think, uh, the cheetah is not a big cat. As a matter of fact, it is closestly related to pumas and the perpetually pissed off jagarundi. And there are actually four major subspecies of cheetah. Much like with the caracal, uh, the names are not that creative. We have the Southeastern, which is found in South Africa, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Botswana, Namibia, Angola, Kenya, and Tanzania. The Central African cheetah in Ethiopia, South Sudan, Chad, and the Central African Republic. The North African cheetah of Benin, Burkina Faso, Niger, Mali, and, and Algeria. And then the Asiatic, the rarest of them all, being actually critically endangered, only being found in the mountainous steppes of Iran. Now, even though it is not a big cat, it is relatively large, being roughly 3 feet tall and anywhere from 70 to 130 pounds. As you can tell, based on its stats, it is a very lanky boy, and that leads to its greatest feat. And that is its insane speed. Obviously, we all know the cheetah is the fastest land animal on Earth, reaching anywhere from 58 to 65 miles per hour. And there's a few things that really benefit this animal to do such a feat. Some of the evolutionary processes that led to this consist of the previously mentioned light frame, its long legs, long tail, which is used somewhat like a rudder for balance, the slightly retractable claws, they're not completely immobile, however, compared to other animals, they barely retract. They give it a grip somewhat akin to cleats. Uh, it also has enlarged nasal cavity so that the air can pass through easier, and a large heart and large lungs to help the air circulate, and smaller canines, again, to aid in its uh, ease of breathing. Now before we go too much further, let me discuss what I am doing in the exhibit. As you can see, I put a line of dirt all along the length from that little cave structure all the way out to the end, and that is pretty much to represent a running area. You see, in nature, animals will actually create things called game trails for all of you who live perpetually in the city which is a section of forest or grassland that has been permanently padded down by the traveling areas of animals. And seems how their cheetah is known to run and pretty much exhibit strong bursts of speed, I decided it would be very thematic to have one very long stretch from one end to the other. Now, funnily enough, because of the non-big cat nature of the animal, it actually is not capable of roaring which the other cat species that I spoke of earlier also cannot roar. 
In contrast, they actually can purr, chirp, hiss, and squeak to pretty much display their general mentality, similar to that of house cats. Now, the cheetah has a very long history, and seems how I really do want to start getting into the uh, paleo history for a lot of the animals we do here. Let's start from the beginning, shall we? So, the lineage that they are uh, a part of, that being the puma lineage, which is not to be confused with the animal of the same name, separated somewhere around 6.7 million years ago in North America. Believe it or not, many, many animals actually started off in North America, including camels, big cats, wolves, bears, horses, and eventually they made their way over the Bering Land Bridge, as did the early proto-cheetah, eventually making its way into Eurasia and eventually Africa. Now, in between the evolution of the cheetah and the puma, whether it be a connected species or sort of, you know, one branch went off to be bulkier and more mountainous and the other more lean and too the uh, open plains of the American Great Plains, the, there is an in-between species. Now, technically, it is more closely related to the puma. However, it is a species known as the, the Mirosionics, otherwise known as the American cheetah. Now, unlike the African and Asian cheetah that we are familiar with, they probably held a niche in between the Asiatic cheetah, where it lives in those steppe lands, uh, and gets a better view of the area that's going to be hunting, and the snow leopard being a more rugged, thicker coat and thicker build to deal with the Rocky Mountains. Now, the fossils of the species have actually been found all across North America. Um, there's an idea that it probably expanded all throughout the continent of the United States, seems how there were fossils found everywhere from Florida to Pennsylvania to California. So the idea is it probably extended into parts of Mexico and Canada as well, uh, especially seems how the cheetah and the puma had both expanded both north and south, respectively. Now, after the prehistoric age, there was actually many attempts to domesticate the cheetah as well. As a matter of fact, the cheetah and the caracal that we spoke about in the last episode share a decent amount of history, despite being only vaguely related in the, the feline subspecies. So, because of their little aggression towards humans, it really led to attempts of domestication for the longest period of time. The first recorded attempt was in ancient Egypt in 3000 BC. To give you an idea of how long ago that was, conservatively speaking, the ancient Egyptian pyramids wouldn't be built for another 300 years before we have an actual idea of when they tried to domesticate this animal. And similarly, just like with the caracal, it was primarily used to help in hunting. However, unlike the caracal, it wasn't just for birds. Uh, they were also used to help hunt impala and other uh, ungulates that can be found throughout Africa and Eurasia. Now, they were also used as a status symbol. Uh, artwork of hunting cheetahs have actually been found all over the Old World, including in Egypt, Yemen, and parts of Rome, modern-day Italy. And as a status symbol, all over, even further than we found for hunting cheetahs. We've seen different forms of art in Rome, all sorts of African nations, and even statues in the tombs of Akbar the Great of the Mughal Empire, and Kublai Khan, the Mongol leader of China. Now, with all this said and done, it is no surprise that, obviously, even today, the cheetah is seen as a very regal creature. However, it has seen a lot of issues in its entire history. Uh, for the most part, one of the things that is 
common to bring up is the fact that they are absolute pushovers. Despite the fact that I love this animal, I cannot in good conscience sit here and tell you it is anywhere near the leopard or lion in its power. It's not. It's fast, fast, and that's it. As a matter of fact, most of the time after it's finished hunting, it can't even eat its food because it has to recover, which leads to all sorts of animals coming over and just swiping its food. Things everywhere from hyenas to lions to even vultures can push a cheetah away from its meal. Now, not only is it a pushover with just constantly getting finessed by other animals in its habitat, the cheetah also suffers from anxiety. As a matter of fact, as you saw when making the exhibit, the actual fence that I had is actually one-way glass because cheetahs are extremely anxious. And in reality, they will have emotional support dogs. I'm not kidding. They will bring in emotional support dogs to sit and help cheetahs become more calm in their environments. The idea that this is some major apex predator is really... It's fitting, but not fitting. Because, yes, it's a very successful hunter. The issue is, is it, it quite literally is a scaredy cat. But we love it all the same. Now, let's get into the conservation part. So, while they are a vulnerable species, there's a little bit that needs to be considered. Because it's not all doom and gloom, but also not all great. And not all the fault of humanity, for once. So, yes, there's the illegal pet trade, there's destruction of habitat, there's killing because they think that the cheetahs are going to eat livestock. That is all very common problems that the cheetah has to face. However, there's a bigger issue, and it's an issue they had seen twice in their history. One was roughly 100,000 years ago, give or take, and the other is somewhat more recent. And that is genetic bottlenecking. Uh, if you look at the actual territorial map of cheetahs, it's very sporadic, and it's not a single landmass and more of just little pockets here and there, except for the southeastern uh, African cheetah. That one's a bit more spread out. However, there's a very limited amount of, of genetic diversity. As a matter of fact, there's only 5% of the original diversity in cheetah genetics. 5% of what it is supposed to be. Consider that when we bring up the idea of an endangered species. Now, there have been uh, movements to aid cheetahs in bringing them into a healthy fold by bringing North African cheetahs down south, the southeastern cheetahs over toward the west. But it is a serious, serious problem that they continue to face. And there are many large cat and wild cat sanctuaries all across Africa and even in a lot of zoo programs, if they have a cheetah, they may be a part of this gen uh, genetic diversity uh, movement. So, with all that said and done, I really just ran through all the information I had as quickly as I could. Hopefully it was still digestible. If not, feel free to let me know. Uh, s slow it down, maybe. You know, watch it. You know, watch it again. Watch this video again. Slow it down. You'll catch everything. Do it a couple times if you have to. Don't be afraid. Don't worry. Um, but, Anyway, uh, that is going to be it for this episode. Um, I know, it's over real quick, but uh, I'm glad, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like, comment, sub, all that fun stuff. You know how this works. And uh, until next time, go.
Go outside, touch grass, drink water, hug your loved ones, and I will see you next week. Goodbye.